Hey everyone, it's Sebastian. I am covering our seven point assessment for re injury, potential re injury in sports hernias. This is a self assessment. If you have a score of zero to one, you're at lower risk. Congrats, you've done a great job in your rehabilitation. If you're two to four, then you have a moderate risk. And if you're above that, then you have a higher risk. The good thing is that if you're higher on the number scale, is there's always something that you can do to help mitigate risk. So the self-assessment we like to do, number one, is going to be seated external rotation of the hip. Um, and you're going to compare both sides on all these. Remember that a score of one, which is a positive, which is not good, it's positive, okay, is that you have pain, discomfort, discrepancies between sides in any location of the crease of the hip, the back of the hip, the lower back, the knee, the hamstring, anywhere in the area. Like this should just generally feel kind of stiff around the hip joint and it should feel equal both sides. That's the benefit of using the other side is you can get a baseline of what normal is for you, okay? So I'm looking also at range here. You can record yourself if you'd like, but the range for me looks kind of ish, right? And on this side, it kind of looks kind of ish. I mean, if I had to guess, this side's probably a little bit lower than the other side, but we want to see a gross prob like a, a gross discrepancy. We want to see that it's like, yeah, okay, this is really different here, like quite a bit different. When you find the one that's the lowest hanging fruit, that's what we can design our program, program, around, uh, program around to try to help solve, okay, to get your score lower. So external rotation is the first one. Note where, uh, how it feels, how far you go, where you feel it, and so on. The next one's hip internal rotation, which is here and across. The foot's going to be generally outside of the other knee, you know, or at least driven that way. And so here and so. Um, compensation you may find on this is that people tend to lean a little bit. Okay, make sure that you're still seated upright. The next one is going to be for hip extension. Now, this is a hip flexor stretcher. A lot of you have uh, seen it as that. The way we're going to decrease the amount of hip flexor involvement, because we're going to check the actual joint, is that we're going to, number one, don't elevate the foot. It's not a couch stretch. Number two is we can go kind of thinker style, just like so. And then you can see if you can drive your belt buckle towards the wall in front of you. Okay. To keep both sides fair as well, you should be able to generally draw a straight line between your knee and your foot, which is like that. And on the other side, stay on that same line. Don't let the foot flop around it and just take whatever position it wants to. Okay, you take that and you compare it to both sides. Uh, by the way, a positive on this is going to be obviously duplication of symptoms, um, feeling stiffness on one side versus another, uh, or feeling stuff into the back, or even like way down the thigh. If you actually go here, you should be able to feel way less thigh involvement. There still be a little bit, but it shouldn't be excruciating. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is uh, a leg lift test. It's funny, this one is actually one that a lot of people use as a rehab exercise uh, for a long time. And I think they finally realized that they shouldn't be doing it anymore because it hurts so darn bad. But even when they don't have symptoms, doing something like a hip flexor exercise can actually be um, provocative in some way, or at least abnormal, right? So you go here and you can go hands on the belly, one leg up to generally 45, other leg up and stay. You should be able to hold this for about 10 seconds. Now, a lot of people that we've met before, they do have a lot of pain or lower abdominal pain, add adductor, low back associated to this. So this one gets pretty positive pretty quick. Um, this is another regressed version that in case you want to use this as a rehab exercise, you obviously, you can change the leverage on it, but this one's pretty hard. Okay. If you can't do it, score yourself a one or if it's painful, the next one is going to be just to sit up. And so it's going to be here and act like you're getting out of bed. You're going to sit up and then you're going to do it on the other side too. I'm not going to because of camera angle. Okay. And the last one is going to be an adductor squeeze. We can use a chair for this, or you can do it standing, but sitting up and squeezing just like so, and ramp up your tension to about 80% of your full ability to squeeze your knee, uh, squeeze your hand. You can do one or two fists. Uh, I generally like to do two fists, but one will make it a little bit more provocative in case you're looking to, to tease out more symptoms. Um, but this one's pretty painful for a lot of people as well. So um, don't ramp, uh, don't just pulse into hard. You want to ramp up a little bit into it. OK, 
okay? So those ones are ones that will tend to remain semi-positive or having a score at least. They'll have a score of one because range of motion is part of it, pain is part of it, abnormal feeling is part of it, even though your symptoms get better. And I don't mean that in a bad way, but this is something you can obviously track, all right? So you get that score way down despite your pain, despite your, re, uh, your reintroduction back into sport, and you'll actually fare way better. So I hope you enjoyed the performance play seven point assessment for sports hernia reaggravation.